Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and I found a beautiful, nearly uninhabited, little traveled country road just now with some cows and some ranchers' homes on it, very sparsely settled. And so I saw some very interesting cloud formations and so I stopped to take some pictures. And that put me in mind of a book of uh, Tom Kenyon's that I've been reading about the Arcturians. And in it he describes his first encounter with an Arcturian who was a science officer and being, um, being very inclined toward science as well as intuition. Tom asked this Ar Arcturian science officer for a, a definite physical sign that he was talking to an, uh, someone from a higher dimension. And the Arcturian said very sensibly um, that it would take too much energy for him to, to make his image dense enough for Tom to see it, but that he could, uh, he could make a change in the clouds. There was this huge cloud cover over, very dense dark cloud cover over where Tom was standing out in the wilderness where he was hiking. He said he could, he could make the sun shine, and would that be sufficient proof? And since it looked to Tom apparently like there was very little chance, no chance of the sun showing through on a day like that, he agreed. And so then he started back towards where he was staying. And as he walked back, as he hiked back in that direction, uh, like a dime hole um, aperture appeared in the dark, dense, black cloud cover over his head, just enough room for the sun to show through. Eventually, that's what apparently happened. And so, it took a few days for this to percolate through my consciousness. And because I've been le reading signs in the clouds for, for years now, and, um, and there's a relationship between what Tom said and what I've been reading. For instance, a few years ago, when I was living in Los Angeles, uh, I would always, every time I went for a hike, I would encounter a beautiful image image after image of angel clouds, just all the time. Sometimes at sunset, fiery gold and red, and sometimes during the day, every time I would look up, it would seem at the sky, I would see an angel cloud with wings, you know, wings flaring out and like that. And, uh, and what, what all has been happening recently? Oh, then there was a time, this was a stellar time. I was going through Albuquerque on the way to the airport and I saw all of these clouds. There must have been 15 clouds shaped like flying saucers. Really. <laughs> what do you call them? Those clouds, right? And, um, and at that time, at that exact time, I received this incredible download of, of axiotonal line connections with the universe. It was just incredible. And so, and I'm going, well, could these be um, ET vessels? I mean, they look like clouds, you know. I, I was just going, surely they're clouds. Maybe they're concealing spaceships, you know. And I got this incredible gift from the stars at the same time moment that I saw the, the clouds and so then later I went I went back and I, I looked in in Albuquerque for more clouds like that and there were no clouds months later no clouds you know <laughs> so so finally today I'm, I'm oh yeah and so last night there was a bit of roiling there was a gateway opening it opened earlier than I thought uh, Sandra Walter mentioned it it's supposed to start today and it's supposed to continue through this coming Wednesday. But for me, it was starting Friday, not to, not Saturday today. And so uh, there was a bit, a lot of confusion because I had a day planned. And then when I got home, there was all of this energy that needed to be settled into my, into my light body and like that. And so I couldn't really get to sleep. So first I tried reading a little from Tom's Arcturian book, and then I moved on to Judy Satori's uh, most recent Galactic Council um, MP3, which is 
incredible as well. Uh, and in it, uh, it's an hour, about an hour and 15 minutes, and it, it mentions things that I had already read in her book, Sunshine Before the Dawn. And in addition, it offers new downloads of, of light and uh, activations of light near the end. And when she got, this was the second time I had heard this, when I got to the end of it, um, she, she was talking about Mos, Mostinia. And Mostinia is a figure that I've been following in her book uh, um, because I remember that name somehow. I remember that name and it triggers a bunch of memories. And so she said that name again. And I was just, for some reason, just ready. And I saw, like, into my body of light came like this energy swirling in from different locations when she said that word mostinia and I finally and I finally realized the meaning of this word codes uh, that that is talked about this word word coding and codes codes are keys that unlock mm, memories in our DNA you know because I for this time I finally saw it you know, I didn't just feel it, I actually saw the energy coming in in different ways and from different, so I thought, geez, I'd better rest. <laughs> so, so as I was resting wide awake and wondering what was going on, it was like at midnight last night, I, I began to feel like uh, activations of, of clear memories in my... Um, etheric net, I felt, felt it mo the energies moving around and like activating, not in the way that the um, solar events sometimes disturb those distortions of light and then they, they pass, the solar events pass and the distortions of light are still there you know, sometimes, but rather as if all of these distortions were being uh, actually systematically very slowly and with like a fine gossamer thread of, of energy was going here and there and releasing all of those those uh, those memories of of um, of uh, emotions and thought thought filled emotions of other people that were projected onto me and and were somehow holding my etheric net in a distorted like view of the truth of reality and this went on for a long time last night so um, this morning was completely different uh, there was a completely different tenor to my emotional body and to the astral life forms that I was encountering today uh, so so I'm, I'm saying all that because this is my most vivid experience of code uh, so far keys and code, keys to new creation and coding came through Judy last night. And this understanding of how the Arcturian's uh, science officer can manipulate cloud cover has helped me to a further realization today. Okay, so here I was going down this, this very interesting, uninhabited, except by cows, country road, and uh, I saw two clouds right? The first cloud, it looked like coding, coding in the sky. And, I, and so, like a confirmation of what happened last night, coding, right? And so, I thought, finally thought, I thought, my gosh, all these cloud significances that I've been uncovering might actually be offered to me through the medium of benevolent beings of light. And to you as well, you might find the same messages in the clouds. So then I looked off on the other side of the road, and what did I see? But some beautiful, is it called cumulus clouds? It was like joy. It looked like joy on the other side of, of the road. So, so the message that I got today, who knows, maybe from a spaceship, who knows? from the higher dimensions, the message that I got was, these codes have brought you joy. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? So, anyway, 
y'all take care. Love you lots. Hope you find lots of blessings in the clouds. 